Hi everyone, it's Heather. Welcome back into the Paper Castle. This is my haul for this past week. There was a rummage sale on uh, Wednesday, which was the 8th, I think, of February. Oh no, the 12th, sorry. There was a rummage sale on the 12th, and then on Saturday I went to a couple places uh, around my town and bought a few things. So, um, I did get all the comments you guys left about, you know, what you guys want to see on my channel. I'm seriously thinking about going on camera. So, see what happens with that. <laughs> um, I'm still going to be so nervous, but I guess I should kind of be used to it. Because I look at all the, the East Coast resellers that are in my area. Uh, we all seem to now we've all started kind of going to the same places so I just end up in the background of all their videos so regardless I guess I'm on camera um, so um, I'm thinking about doing that and um, thinking about doing some other things with you know shipping videos and things like that that you all want to see and if there's anything else that you guys want to see or any questions you have you know please leave them in the comments section below so I'm going to start with the rummage sale. Um, this is that one at a little Methodist church about 40 minutes north of me. I've been going there for about uh, three or four years now. They have sales I think four times a year. Um, and it's great. It's a, it's a little tiny gold mine for me. I love it. I didn't do as well there this time as I usually do, but that's okay. Um, the good thing about theirs is that they put tons of pictures on their website so if you're into hard goods like I am it's nice because I can kind of map out exactly where I want to go right when I get in there and get everything I want and then you know keep looking from there um, it doesn't really work if you're into the clothes which you guys know I'm not so um, yeah works out well for me so let me get started and show you guys what I got I think I spent a whopping total of like 36 bucks there. Um, first up, in the craft section, they didn't really have anything except for I bought a finished piece. This is a finished needlepoint piece by Candemar Designs. Um, can be either framed or made into a pillow. So that I'm hoping to get at least maybe, or at least. 10 to 15. Then um, that was a dollar. Pretty much everything was a dollar except for some of the little things that I'm going to show you um, towards the end of the haul, which were 50 cents. Um, and a couple things were higher than a dollar, but I'll let you know what those are. Um, this is a dollar. This is a vintage set of Black Stallion books from, I believe, 1969. Not really worth all that much, but like I said, I only paid a buck, so. Probably 10 to 15 plus shipping on that. Then I got two things in the perfume section. I got this bottle of Chloe. This is a three ounce bottle of Eau de Toilette, which is pretty full, I believe. Yeah. Um, Maybe 15 to 20 plus shipping on that. But that was also a dollar. So is this. This is a bottle of. That one's too focus. Hello. Which it does not. Um, this is a bottle of Live Love Dream by. There we go by Aeropostale. It's not full, so maybe like 10 plus shipping. And let's see, what else? What other little things? Oh, I got two of these wooden puzzle boxes. This is a monkey. Um, it's not marked or anything, doesn't have a name on it, but that was a dollar, maybe 10 plus shipping on him. And then I get another one that's a lot nicer. This is an angel. This one's by Carver Dance. And this one 
The only bad thing about it is that somebody decided to write all over the inside when they gave it as a gift. So, hoping that doesn't hurt the value too much because otherwise it's in fantastic shape. But, um, I'm hoping to get at least 10 to 15 plus shipping on that. If it didn't have writing on it, I'd definitely get 15 plus shipping, but, you know, we'll see. Then I got this little owl. He, I thought he was a Tonala Mexico piece, but he's not. He is from Guatemala. You guys can see that. And probably get about 10 plus shipping on him. Then I picked up this little enamel box on my second trip around. Um, this is from, who is this from? I think it's Empress Arts on the back of that. Um, I don't have my glasses on because I lost my glasses, so forgive me if I can't read all the <laughs> things on the back of these. Um, my glasses were falling apart as it was, and they're a disaster, and I needed new ones anyway, but, um... Now I kind of have to go without until I can get a new prescription, get new glasses made. And I can't wear the readers to do stuff like this where I have to look near and far or I get a horrible headache. Um, then I got this little brass duck figurine because, you know, brass can do pretty well sometimes. This one, not so much. Maybe only 10 plus shipping on him. But I think there's a few of those up there. So it might take a while for him to sell. Um, then for $8, this is one of the first things I picked up when I walked in. I got this vintage cast iron Coca-Cola um, horse-drawn wagon. It had all these little crates and bottles and even had this little hand truck in here if you can see that and it's in really good shape the only thing is that there's chains that are supposed to go from here to the to this screw right here on the side of the horse part of the chain is on the other side and I can probably just pick something up at Michael's and replace that so that's not a big deal but even without the chain it should be fine um, I paid eight for that so I'm hoping to get I don't know like 40 to 50 plus shipping for that and next up these little figurines they usually have a table and they put all the tiny little things there and I usually find all these little brass animal figurines there, at least I have the past few years that I've gone. Um, didn't find any of those little ones this year, just found that duck, but I found all of these kind of Netsuki style figurines that I believe they're all just resin, but I paid about 50 cents a piece for these. This is a couple of little monkeys carrying a basket of fruit. And I think it's marked, whoops. Um, I can't remember what the mark is on it. I think it's like WE or something like that, but I, I haven't been able to figure out what it is. But I'll probably just put like Netsuki style figurine in the title with all of these and see what happens. I got these four little guys if anybody knows if these are like specific people let me know but these are like resin or plastic they're marked made in Hong Kong on the back so um, like I said I pay 50 cents for the whole lot so if I get 10 a piece for them I'm fine with that I'm probably expecting about 10 a piece on all these guys um, and then these last three are kind of interesting. This one is two birds. And then 
Um, I don't know if it's supposed to be something on the bottom or if it's just the bottom of the nest, but I mean it's very intricately carved. There is a name on the bottom of it, which I don't remember what it said. MFA? Yeah, it's MFA. And that is the same name that's also on this turtle, which is cool because when you first look at it, it just looks like a turtle. But then when you turn it over, it's this little man. So, thought those were really cool. Those I'll definitely put up for auction and see what happens with those. And then I got this cat, and this is a Metropolitan Museum of Art piece, and this one has a fish underneath. So I'm assuming these all probably came from the same person who collected these. So all those little tiny figurines were 50 cents each. So those little four guys, they were 50 cents for the whole lot. And then I also paid 50 cents for this little hand-painted Russian doll. I don't know. I'm assuming she might be one of those that's in like a nesting doll set, but because um, I haven't been able to find any information on her. There is a name on the bottom and I've looked it up, but I've had no luck unfortunately. But she's so pretty that I figured I would just pick her up and try and sell her on her own. And then for another 50 cents I picked up this cat. I thought it was Lennox initially, but it's not. It's Elizabeth Arden. It's from their Treasures of the Pharaohs collection. And this is a pomander. So you put, it still has stuff in it, so it still, still does smell like, basically like powder. Um, like kind of talcum powder-ish kind of smell. But um, these are only going for maybe like 8 to 10 on eBay. And then um, I'll show you the better things that I bought there. Um, again, in that figurine section, I picked up this blown glass horse. Um, really, really pretty. And it's a decent size, too. I learned when my husband's aunt passed away um, five years ago that she had a bunch of these blown glass and spun glass figurines and my husband's like you know try them on ebay he's like nobody in the family wants them try them on ebay and i'm like yeah but you know are they really worth anything and they really did do pretty well better than i expected and horses are really popular so I'm hoping to get maybe i don't know 10 to 20 on that and then when i was looking at the previews for the sale i saw all these little wood figurines and I was very excited because I thought they were probably Polish and I was correct because a couple years back I bought one of these um look like Don Quixote you know on a horse and I bought them for 50 cents or a dollar and put them up at auction for $14.99 and got multiple bids on him. So I was really excited. I think he sold for close to 20. So I found all these guys. Most of them are musicians, as you can see. Got the drummer, um, two violinists, a cellist, someone playing like something that looks like a flute or a recorder, and then an accordion back here. And then this guy is just a shepherd. Although, well, yeah, he's also playing a recorder or something, too. So, all these guys were a bucket piece, and, oh, here's one. Some of the marks on a lot of the other ones are blurred, but this one you can kind of see. There, it's from B, or S, Borowick, and S, Boliniak, I think, are the names. And they're made in Poland. And all of these should go for between... 20 to 30 dollars each although I will probably put this little one up with this other violinist because the tree is broken in one spot so I'll probably put those up as a lot 
So I think that was pretty much everything that I bought downstairs. And then if you go upstairs in this place, there's a, um, oh, that's where all the clothing, linens, jewelry, and all that stuff is. Oh, I also bought a microwave cover for my microwave, which I was very excited about. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound like much to you guys, but it was one of those ones with the magnets that sticks on the, like, you know, underside of your microwave, which is very cool. But I desperately, desperately needed one because my daughter had um, tried to burn the house down a few months back, baking cookies for my son, and uh, she melted the other two that I had, kind of set them on fire, so... Um, I don't know if I told you guys that story of how she tried to kill him and all of us pretty much uh, baking these cookies that he asked for, but um, I'll try and tell that story at the end of this haul for you guys that want to hear it. Okay, so, um, very excited about my microwave thing. I also bought a little thing to hold my paper plates on the counter. Um, so I guess I spent $34 if you subtract those two things that I bought for myself. So then I went upstairs, couldn't find any good pillows or anything like that, but I did find a children's um, bedding set. This is the pillowcase, and it's got all these kind of hand-drawn images of trucks and fire trucks, and it says big trucks on it, and it's got this stripe pattern on the other side. I've got this twin sham plus a twin bedspread. And the whole thing cost me five bucks. They're in really good shape. I can't find a name on them, but I should easily be able to get probably 20, or 20, 40 to 50 on that. So that was a good find. It was buried under a whole bunch of stuff. And then the last thing I bought, did not buy any clothes, but I did get a pair of shoes, which I hardly ever buy shoes, but I got this pair of Nike women's golf shoes. These are Go Air Golf shoes brand spank in new condition um should be able to get i think 25 to 30 on these plus shipping my husband when he saw me he's like why do you buy shoes you don't buy clothes i go well i bought them because they're nike and they're brand new and i said and i knew they were golf shoes and my husband's like oh he's like can i take a picture and send it to my brother and tell me you bought yourself golf shoes I'm like no <laughs> my brother-in-law over the past probably five years has just gotten absolutely like stupidly addicted to golf and it's so frustrating whenever we go down there because that's all he talks about 24 7. he's on craigslist and facebook looking for golf things he's filled my mother-in-law's house yes he still lives with my mother-in-law filled my mother's mother-in-law's house with golf clubs and golf balls and golf paraphernalia and we go down there and it looks like we're staying in a golf store it's unbelievable um but anyway he keeps trying to get us to go too my husband's into it but not nearly as much as him but he keeps trying to get the rest of us to go too we're like no we're not enabling you in your golf obsession um so that was it i think from that sale and then on saturday uh, I ended up going into town because there's um, a building on Main Street in our town that they've set it up as kind of like a, they call it a flea market type thing. It's kind of like an antique store, rummage sale looking kind of deal that they've set up in there. And their prices are, you know, normally really good, but Saturday they were even better because they were having like a fill a box sale. You could put 12 items in a box for five bucks for most of the things and a couple other things had separate prices on them but they were also reduced. So I went in there. Um, normally I'm not here this week in February. Normally I'm in Florida but with my daughter being in high school now and can't get that much time off we're not going till spring break. So um, I was kind of down in the dumps and trying to cheer myself up so I did some retail therapy and went to look for things. Um, so I did pretty good for, let's see, this was one of the fill -a box items. It's this cute little bear that looks like he's puzzle pieced together in wood. He doesn't have a name on him, but he was 45 cents. 
because um, I think I got 11 things for $5. And one thing they charged me a little extra for, but I was okay with that. Um, and then there was another thing that didn't qualify for the fill -a box sale. But it all goes to charity. Um, they're fighting to keep the hotel across the street from the courthouse where the Lindbergh trial was. Somebody wants to knock the Union Hotel down, and um, which... I don't want to see happen because it's been there my whole life. Um, someone wants to knock it down and put something else up and the town is trying to, half the town's trying to save it and half the town wants it knocked down. So this has been going on for like years now. So we'll see what happens. But if you grow up around here, you know more than you'll ever need to know about the Lindbergh trial. So that's where they kidnapped Charles, Lind Charles, Lind Charles Lindbergh's baby and then um, the trial was held in the courthouse on Main Street in our town. So, um, next up is this Kirk Steiff Christmas bell. This is a silver plate bell from 1994. It's musical. It plays the Christmas song, which is, you know, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Um, the box was completely jacked up and filthy, and I managed to get it clean um, polished the bell because that was a tarnished mess also, but like I said, 45 cents, probably should be able to get 10 to 15 out of that. Then I got, for another 45 cents, I picked up this kind of abstract Snow White Disney mug. This is from the parks. The handle looks like her hair, the body of it looks like her dress, with the apple there. Um, there's two different versions of this. One is plain like this, and then one, the apple has all red rhinestones in it. But I should still be able to make 10 on this plus shipping. And then I got eight of these plates. These are from Fitz and Floyd. So each one of them cost me 45 cents because they were, these were in the fill -a box deal. These, as you can see, the Fitz and Floyd mark on the back there. These are older, um, probably early 80s, I would think. And these are from the April Flowers pattern, which I found later after I got home and was searching like Fitz and Floyd flower-shaped plates. But they're all supposed to look like pansies. So I got four of the bowls and four of these little side plates. One, this one has a little, I think it's this one that has a chip. One of them has a chip. Maybe it's the pink one. Oh, yeah. Pink one's got a little chip right here, but that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to sell the plates on their own. Probably only make around 20 plus shipping, 25. And the bowls, maybe around the same thing. But like I said, only 45 cents a piece, so I couldn't pass that up. Then for five bucks... I got this Spa Room Chrome Aroma Mist Essential Oil Diffuser. It is brand spanking new in the box, still sealed. box has a little wear, but that's okay. This is a limited edition one. There's a black one, a white one, and then there's the chrome. So I'm hoping to get at least 30 to 35. Okay, sorry guys, had to start the video again. And then last but not least, I'm not going to take it out of the box. I got this Snowtown, this is going to focus, I'm hoping that's focusing, I don't have my glasses, so who knows. Um, this is from Kurt Adler. This is Snowtown Village Fishing Shack. Apparently this series of these um, lighted houses is pretty popular. I ended up looking it up on my phone when the woman was carrying the box over to where I was standing. The house was on the table and she was carrying the box over. And she's like, you know, if anybody wants this house, the box is down here. And I'm like, oh, what's that? So I looked up the name on the box and I was like, holy crap, I'm going to buy that. So this cost me two. I should be able to get, I think around 50 on that. So I was really happy to find that. And then I left there and I was driving the back way to get back home and I ended up going through this little um, 
This little place in town has all these tiny little stores. I'm not usually back there very much, but apparently now there's a thrift store back there that I had no idea about called Possibilities. So I popped in there. It's mostly clothes and shoes and stuff, but their prices are decent. So I did look around the perimeter where they had some of their hard goods. And I saw this little set, this creamer and sugar set. And I'm like, oh, they're, you know, they're cute. I'm like, they'll definitely sell. And I turned them over. And of course, there was a big red sticker right smack over the mark. I can't stand when they do that. They do that at Goodwill all the time. Especially if you have a plate and there's tons of room where they can put the sticker and they put it right over the mark in the center. So irritating. I mean, do you want people to buy the things that you have out? <laughs> so anyway, I peeled it back a little bit. I saw the bird. I was like, oh, yay. Um, anthropology. So I ended up looking this up and somebody has just the creamer up for 45. Somebody else has the whole setup for 50, but there's something wrong with it, I think. And it's coming from Canada. So I'm going to put this set up for 50. Originally these were $3 a piece, which I was more than happy to pay. And then I got up there and realized they were having a sale and I only paid three bucks for the set. So I was very happy about that. So that is it, I think, for this week. So I got to get to taking pictures and listing. Um, but oh, let me tell you this story really quick about my daughter trying to kill all of us. My son, because my daughter bakes a lot, she wants to be a pastry chef. He re always requests things for her to make. So there was something going around the internet a few months back about two-day cookies, which are basically kind of um, hyped up chocolate chip cookies and you leave them in the fridge for two days so they can like marinate and then they're supposed to taste amazing. Well, they have chocolate chips and like a few other things in them. So first off, she had to make toffee so that she could break it up and put it in the cookie dough when she eventually made the cookie dough. So the toffee was the first step. So she's in here making it on the stove and she asked me to come in because she wanted me to check it. And I walk in and I'm looking at it and I'm like, why does it look funny? And she's like, yeah, I don't know. She's like, it looks weird. And she's the whole time she's stirring it with like a plastic spoon instead of a wooden spoon. And I didn't realize she had the spoon like jammed down in the pot and she's like really stirring it. So I see all these like flecks in it. I'm like, what? I don't What are the flecks? She's like, I don't know. And then all of a sudden you see this big hunk of something float up to the top. I'm like, oh my God, like pull that spoon out of the pot. She had completely melted the spoon and hunks of it were just falling off into the toffee. I'm like, oh my God. And this is after I had told her before she even made this. I'm like, make sure you use a wooden spoon or one of the silicone spatulas. But no, <laughs> neither one of them ever listened to me. So we threw that batch out. She makes a new batch. She had to pour it out like on a silk pad, one of those silicone mats. She had to pour it out on that. We covered it with saran wrap and everything's great. Well, apparently I wasn't watching her when she pulled the saran wrap off the toffee and it all came off, I guess, except in like one tiny section. So there was still some saran wrap on the toffee. Well, either she didn't notice it or she didn't care. And then she broke it all up anyway and put it aside to put in the cookie dough, unbeknownst to any of us. So then she made the dough. It comes time to cook, to bake the cookies. And she had made them like ch regular chocolate chip cookie size. And I was looking at the recipe and I said, well, the recipe says they should be really big. She goes, yeah, but then we'll only have a few cookies and, and this way we can have a lot. I'm like, okay. Well, then my son comes downstairs and he starts yelling at her and he goes, they're not big. They're supposed to be big. So she's like, oh, she goes, can you help me like put a few of these together so we can make, the, make them big? I go, okay. So I start helping her and we're rolling the cookies into balls, you know, taking two or three of the balls, putting them together. And I'm looking and there's like stuff sticking out of a couple of them. I'm like, what 
is that? And she goes, what are you talking about? I'm like, there's stuff sticking out of it. And I realized later it was plastic wrap. <laughs> so here I am trying to pick plastic wrap out of the cookies. And she's like, well, we'll just pick them anyway. She goes, it's, pro it's not a lot. And I go, well, we should like throw all this out. She goes, I'm not throwing this out. It took taking me two or three days to make these. And he keeps like complaining about these cookies. He says, let's just make them. She goes, will it kill him? And I go, well, probably not. He's probably eaten worse than that. She goes, fine. And we're just baking them. It's probably only in like one or two anyway. <laughs> I'm like, great. So that was the second time she tried to kill us. And so then she bakes one batch. They come out great. She puts the next batch in and she sets what she thought was the timer on the microwave. In my microwave, normally, I have my two microwave covers um, flipped upside down and then my stack of paper plates are in them. So she sets a timer. She's got the cookies in the oven. My husband and I are in the other room. And about 10 or 15 minutes go by and we start smelling something. And he goes, are those cookies burning already? He goes, she just put them in there. I go, yeah. I go, I don't know what that is. Come out into the kitchen and realize she had set the microwave to cook instead of the timer. And uh, the paper plates were on fire and while well, they were smoking and the um, covers were melting. I'm like, oh my God. I open the microwave, smoke comes pouring out of the microwave. It's everywhere. It smells horrible because it smells like plastic. My husband's yelling at everybody to get out of the house. Um, I grab the microwave covers and the, with the paper plates in them and run outside and I just threw them in the middle of the driveway. And in the meantime, we're getting the other, we're getting the kids out of the house and opening like every door and window to try and get the smoke out. And then my husband sees there's more smoke coming down the driveway and he's like, he's like, what the heck's going on in the driveway? I go, that's where I threw the microwave covers and the paper plates. He walks over to pick them up and as soon as he went to pick them up, all the paper plates just burst into flame. <laughs> so, we had to get the hose and put all the paper plates and the microwave covers out um, wait a while before we threw them out but anyway that was our cookie baking adventure and needless to say she will never be making two day old cookies again um, and now I finally have a new microwave cover and I've told her to be very, very careful and make sure the cover is not in there if she ever wants to cook anything longer than 10 minutes, which I don't think we ever do. But anyway, so that's why I was happy to find one at the rummage sale. So that's it, guys. I'll be back again with another video. I'm also planning on doing like a flashback Friday thing. Hopefully I can stay on track um, where I'm going to be uploading all those videos from last year and probably 2018. <laughs> that you guys haven't seen yet. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.